Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 8th of September. So I've seen some really good moves in the market this week. We've seen a continuation from those key levels that we talked about last week. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, so we'll start out here with the Aussie USD. And you can see, look, where we were last week was this zone here. A pullback to the resistance um, is a perfect way to look for entry points into a trade like this. As you can see, we obviously had very strong support at that level and it was resistance. So we did have a role reversal zone from that point. And yeah, where we were last week, it was seeing right on the 20 moving average and also at that resistance point. So what you're really on the lookout for is that first change of trend. And the minute you get that on a smaller time frame, so a series of lower highs and lower lows, um, and you are looking at at shorting that from a very very key point and the obvious target is the one where it's already previously reached without much uh, trouble which is obviously around this one probably 63.75 to 63.80 level that would be your target from this zone here because it's the easiest trade it's around about 100 pips and um, it's already been a tested uh, zone that hasn't really seen a lot of support so that's the first place you're going to find it now where it finds itself now is at a precarious level because really it's holding on for dear life if if we get a daily close below this level here below that sort of 63.70 um, yeah, realistically, probably the 6280 is the next point of call for it. Uh, it is holding on. It's trying very, very hard to actually stick in at this level. But if we do see a daily break, if we're, if we're trading below this level here uh, on Monday morning, uh, yeah, the start of next week, yeah, you would be looking like targeting the 6280 to 6290 is probably the first point, which is this support here. So it's going to be interesting to see if it holds up. If it doesn't, yeah, again, look for the smaller time frame changes of trend and um really a trade back up to the 20 moving average is probably the likely scenario on the way up so if we get a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame throughout today's session uh, or early uh, next week and we are trading above here the 20 moving average is a likely target but if we get a daily close or a weekly close even below this level uh, and monday morning we're trading under the 6370 we'd probably start looking at targeting that 6280 as the the first point of support that's where we're going to probably find the the main support for this one so good trading hopefully you're able to catch that one it was a pretty good trade all right we'll move over to the us dollar cad now uh, again look this has been a, uh, a perfect trade as you can see we were down we were here on um uh, last week on last friday's video on the 20 moving average perfect trade this is what we talk about all the time uh yeah basically pullbacks to the 20 moving average there was the resistance came back um and once it hit that 20 moving average it found its momentum and straight up again similar to the aussie the place that you're looking for the easiest trade is the first place of resistance obviously this has been a long uh, resistance point for quite some time you can see we've had um yeah trades right through here for quite some time at resistance so this is the logical point where you're going to be taking take profit it's obviously gone up and you know pushed past it now but realistically, we're, we're always looking for the easier trade when we are actually scalping. We're in a scalping environment at the moment because we're obviously in a seasonally soft time of year. September is generally, um, August, September is generally a little bit soft. So, you know, we are looking for the indices to fall a little bit. And that generally coincides with, um, yeah, the US dollar CAD, the US dollar yen finding a little bit of strength. So, you know, that said, we're keeping our scalping uh, opportunities uh, nice and short and that was your target there the 136 uh, 30 to 40 area would be the first point of call from this level here the resistance hopefully you're able to get hold of that uh look what it does from here is, is really uh, it's, it's going to be interesting if it pulls back to a 20 moving average on, on a one hour or a four hour and the momentum is still strong on the on the daily you could look at starting to target the next uh, zone the next zone is around that 137 40 you can see right through here these peaks uh, would cause that and the secondary zone, of course, is the big move up to 138.50. Not to say that it can't do it, but yeah, we are in a scalping environment. So if we keep our trade short, you're able to enter and exit quite um, swiftly and you're able to take advantage of these trades. So hopefully you're able to catch that one because that was quite a good trade as well. Uh, the US dollar yen is the, uh, is the next one. Same deal. All of these levels got hit last week. So um, yeah, realistically, hopefully you were able to get hold of some of them because they were all quite uh, good quality in the sense that they, the way they set up and the way they moved off their zones. As you can see, the 20 moving average and the roll reversal zone, the perfect pull up um, from the, the level we were talking about and has seen a new high now. It finds itself in the middle of this zone between the 144 or 155 really and 150. Uh, we're, we're hovering in that middle sort of zone about 147. 
It could break to either side really easily, but the preferred move would be up to the top, of course, because we've got momentum on the way up. We've got a series of higher highs and higher lows on the daily chart. So really the ideal um, scenario would be that it actually moves higher because that's where the momentum is. But it is right in the middle of the zone. A pullback to the 20 moving average again would see us looking for opportunities for a smaller time frame change of trend. If that happened, we could look at potentially getting involved in the long in the first instance, back to the previous high here, and then onto the 150. A lot of people ask, you know, you, you see a candle like that, and how, how do you actually enter? Well, look, when it does pull back to a level like that, you've got to go to the smaller time frames, and that's where your opportunities uh, generally lie. You can see here that the 20 moving average, I mean, to mark off the 20 moving average is probably the important part first. Once you know where that is at the 145.50, okay, you can pop um, a horizontal line there. I'm, I'm going to pop that line there so we can actually go back to the one hour and see what I'm talking about, or even the four hour, we can go to both. Um, this is the level that we're talking about, this green line. That's that's what the four hour looks like. The one hour for the shorter, uh, for the shorter term is effectively the same. Once it hits that zone, you're looking for an opportunity for it to bounce off this level. And what I'm talking about when I'm talking about higher highs and higher lows is once it does this, and we've got a series of higher highs and higher lows, pull back to the 20 moving average and we're off. That's how you enter those sorts of trades. Now, if you entered on this particular touch instead, which was the previous touch uh, after it actually broke that zone, that's perfectly fine as well. As you can see, we've got the little bottom. Once it pulled back, it started to trade up and the series of higher highs and higher lows that we're talking about were well and truly intact. If you didn't take profit here, um, you shouldn't absolutely not have been stopped out here because you've, your stop should have been well behind that, obviously, if you were trading this level uh, and it still continued on. So there were two levels of actually getting into that, but that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that smaller time frame change of trend, a series of higher highs and higher lows on the uh, yen, which was actually quite a good trade. Hopefully you were able to catch that perfect pullback and then off it went. Okay, so that, that all happened uh, after Friday. Dollar index is uh, an interesting one as well. We've got, you know, it, it continued on the job. Look, all of them are really identical in the sense that, you know, they were at the, the key levels last week uh, and they've moved on and done their job. It bounced off the 20 moving average and a very strong support zone as well. So very likely trade that that was going to, um, yeah, push up. But of course, the euro is the one we're really interested in because that's the one we're going to trade in this instance. So yeah, good bounce off there, good strong momentum on the dollar index. But of course, that spelt um, a little bit, little bit more doom for the euro. I mean, if you go back and watch Friday's video, like I, I, I did say last week, you know, although this strength did look encouraging, we had to be very, very mindful that we were still in a dead set downtrend. This is a very strong downtrend of series of lower highs and lower lows on a daily. Yes, it pulled back, but that's what the market does generally. Like we want a, a healthy market will pull back to these levels. And that's why I was very, very cautious at this level that although it looked like it was very strong, um, the prevailing trend was down. Uh, and when that is the case, you're looking for trades in that direction because that's really where the quality trade is okay so as you can see uh once it hit that 20 and 50 moving average that resistance zone down it came and now it found itself at the support at 106.80 of course which is a target that we would be going for look it's um a do or die level for it here it would want to hold because if it fails at this point here and we get a, a daily close at the end of this week below the 106 sort of 60 area the next likely target's going to be that 105.20 look I'll, I'll pop a line there because that could yeah well play out uh if we do get a breakthrough here that's where our next target uh is what we're aiming for keep an eye on it though this is very strong support here what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours is going to be obviously very important if we get a series of higher highs and higher lows the first trade opportunity will be up to the 20 moving average which is around that sort of 108 level that's where you'll find it by the time it gets there that would be the long opportunity scalp but again be mindful that we are in a short term or a longer term downtrend and it's only going to be a short term trade up to that level and it needs to round bottom from this we wouldn't just be taking that and assuming that this support's going to hold. It's still got a bit of work to do on that one. So hopefully you're able to catch that Euro trade as well. Okay, and the last one we'll look at, of course, is the US 500. So uh, no, no different. They've all done the exact same thing. As you can see, we've got... Um, Last week, we were talking about the resistance at this point here. It looked like it was starting to keel over. Uh, yeah, three doji candles uh, highlighted that. And of course, the level that we would have been looking for is the level that it hit, which is the 44.50. Look, same deal in terms of what this uh, brings us. We've got uh, a little bit of news this week. If we're trading above this level on Monday, we would look at long opportunities back up to the previous high at around that 45.20. Wouldn't be any, any excited about anything more than that at this stage. But if we're trading below this level, if we're trading at 44.30 uh, or, or or lower then we're going to start looking at targeting the next support zone which is around that 4350 area i'll put the horizontal line there 
That's the level that we would be looking for if we get a daily close below the 50 and below this level here at around that sort of 44.30 area. Uh, if it round bottoms here and starts to pick up, uh, yeah, the obvious target's going to be the 44, uh, 45.20 level. That's what we'd be targeting in the first instance, and that would be the easier trade uh, on the long side because it's already been there and not that long ago, and there's not a lot of resistance in front of it. So it could go either way, and I'd be happy to trade both ways, but really look for that confirmation on the smaller time frame. Hopefully you've had a good week's trading. Uh, we've seen some really, really good moves off key levels. Hopefully you're able to take advantage of some of those. Have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.